You may have seen the US national debt at $31 trillion, but what if I told you it was going to be $50 trillion in a short period of time? That's what we're going to uncover today. I'm also going to tell you why you're going to pay more at the pump very soon. All of that highlighted here. My name is David Quintieri and I look into the complicated information and I give that to you in a very simple manner each and every single day, giving you the information that you need and getting rid of all that fluff. First things first, we'll talk about the debt. Here it is, looking at this issue, the debt, when it hit $31.4 trillion at that debt ceiling, the Treasury had been using special accounting measures to maintain payments on all federal obligations. There were just $33 billion of those left available as of May 31st. I did a video about this, the Treasury cash balance. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's important to see that like, uh, you know, for instance, you have your own checking account. Well, the government has that too. And that was depleting all the way down. We have this though. If the US government doesn't change its course, reigning in fiscal splurge, and uh, by the way, it's talking about, um, you know, the whole spending, overspending and so on, the national debt will continue to rise and will reach at least $50 trillion by 2030. And you might say, well, that's a long time away. It's going to happen sooner than we can think. Hey, time flies. Think about it. Just think about 2030. We're, you know, almost halfway done the year right now. It'll be 2024 pretty soon. Six and a half years from now, it's 2030. It's really not that, think six and a half years ago. I'm sure you could remember all those details. So while this is a Global Times website, the same situation from Forbes, you know, $50 trillion. They're saying the same thing, okay? I just wanna make that clear. It's not just one individual saying that. 50 trillion by 2030. You have this as well. It goes on everywhere. That's the national debt. But what about household debt? Reaches $17 trillion in the first quarter of 2023. This happens to come from the Fed website, but the data is there and it's everywhere. $17 trillion. It's, it's just incredible. Credit card debt over a trillion dollars. Everybody's using the buy now, pay later. You know that we are in trouble no matter where you look. That is a problem. You see this at the national level. So many countries never been in this much debt. You look at the same time where the Federal Reserve and other central banks have increased their rates because they're trying to get inflation down. Well, that's a big problem. Why is that the case? Well, I think it's pretty clear that when the interest payments on the debt are basically the biggest expense, you've got a very serious fundamental issue. That's going on right now. So they are desperate to hurry up and start cutting rates because this is going to be an issue. Mathematically, there's no possible way that this ends up well. That's the situation we are encountering today. Debt is something that hangs overhead. It's a burden that sits on our shoulders. But the same applies to corporations that are constantly, you know how corporations are able to fund themselves? You know how they are able to hire people? Oh, I know, they, they sell a lot of products and they make their margins and they put that in, in a, like a bank vault and then when they're ready to spend it, they spend it? No, these big corporations, they use the debt market to fund whatever it is they need. That's the way this works. They use their corporate debt. Corporate debt is an asset to them in a sense. So they can do anything they want, but when things get too expensive, borrowing costs are too high, they don't do that as much. So if they're not doing this, they're not buying new equipment. If they're not buying new equipment, well then who are they buying from? That company's gonna lose out. They're not ordering you know, products and services. They're not doing that at their own company. They're not ordering food as much. They're not hiring new employees as much. One after the other after the other. Do you see how the debt affects the corporations? Well, it's the same thing at home. If you are fully up to your neck in debt, you can't get any more, you're maxed out, well then what? Well, there's those buy now, pay later services that people are starting to use. This is at, by the way, also a record high. 
So you can see what's happening here. People are stuffed the maximum they can on this debt. At the same time, the interest rates on that debt are at extreme levels. The average is 20% on credit cards in the United States. Okay, do you see a problem here? National, corporate, and individual, all the highest debt they've ever had before, as well as the fact that the interest rates on top of this. You cannot make this stuff up. The same thing applies to the cars. Prices are about to plummet due to oversupply. They're saying, hey, the $1,000 a month payment's not gonna last, that's the situation. That's what they're saying anyway here. Okay, so it's affecting cars, it's affecting autos, it's affecting corporations, the nation itself, and so on, okay? Now, I wanna show you something right here and now as we look into the next issue, and that's oil. Because what's happening with the economy is directly related to what I'm about to tell you. I wanna mention something here. The articles are not gonna talk about it, but like I say, we have to read between the lines. Now, a lot of people, they can't read between the lines, they don't get it. So I'm going to make it a point right here and now, as well as all future videos, to spill it, to just give you what you need instead of reading between the lines. How does that sound? If I just give it to you, whether you like it or not, I'm just gonna explain that information. No more reading between the lines, okay? How does that sound? You gotta let me know in the comments below, okay? What we're talking about here is Saudi Arabia, as well as OPEC and oil. And there's something going on you've got to pay attention to. But the point I wanna make is that I think, by the way, the number one buyer of Saudi oil being China, we have seen the data and it is signaling a slowdown. So if it's signaling a slowdown, you wouldn't wanna output as much, not quite as much, right? You wouldn't want to do that if you wanted to keep your prices elevated because you didn't need so much and you didn't want to have all the inventory. You want to sell it at a higher price too. So keep that in mind as we look at this. Saudi Arabia, number one buyer being China and China we know is slowing down. So what's Saudi Arabia doing? Let me show you. Here we have it. Saudi Arabia has announced plans to cut its oil production by 1 million barrels per day as the kingdom pledged to do whatever is necessary to prop up sagging prices. Now, these have been slowly coming down a bit. Uh, at the time of this recording, you know, it was around $70 a barrel. The expectation here, I have heard, is that it could go much, much higher. Part of that, Saudi Arabia goes it alone at OPEC plus with million barrel cut. Here you can see oil rallied after OPEC plus announced the cuts in April but has since declined, right? So OPEC plus decides to do this at the same time. Now we're seeing Saudi Arabia doing that as well. New voluntary cut of 1 million barrels per day for July. Saudi Arabia pledged this, uh, which could ex be extended further. So we're gonna see what happens, I believe uh, into 2024. That's, that's the uh, timeline. So therefore we could see this extend out for a while because they made that potential commitment there. Um, in addition to that, the United Arab Emirates, the neighbor and uh, friend of Saudi, ministers continued their discussions. Delegates said the United Arab Emirates was using the opportunity to push to raise the baseline against which it cur its curbs are measured. This is important, right? Because as they say here, you know, these countries, they want to, out, a lot of them, want to output as much as possible. That's how they bring in their revenues, all right? This has been a long-standing claim of the Gulf state, which invested heavily in new production capacity, only to see it sit idle for years due to OPEC Plus's commitments. So if OPEC is saying, you got to do this, you're allowed, you know, a million barrels per day, and then they say, okay, now oh, we're all cutting, so they're going to cut to 800,000 barrels per day. And now suddenly they can't make as much revenue. So that's going to affect their economy as well. So OPEC is not necessarily something that benefits all of the members. But that's the way this works, right? So that's what's happening. Um, some of the countries kind of pissed off about all these cuts here. And so that's what's been going on. And I just trying to explain to you specifically that 
you know, this is the situation for UAE and I'm sure for others as well. They're like, hey, let's invest billions of dollars into expanding our, our oil industry. We're going to make more revenue for our people. They expand it, spend all that money. And then OPEC says, okay, uh, yeah, well, you, you can't output as much as you want. I mean, that's, that's what's happening here. So I'm, I'm trying to explain that to you. Okay, really important. So we talked about the debt situation and we talked about the economy, um, specifically as it relates to oil. That's going to push the prices at the pump up. So you got to be aware of that. And one of the aspects here that I think that we have control over is our personal debt. In this video, I talk about how to get out of debt, tips for getting out of debt. Click it right here and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.